Okay, so what we're doing today is where I'm making a gorget zucchini. This is straight from my garden. Or a crook neck squash, also straight from my garden. We're going to take this onion and put it at the bottom of the Instapot. And we're going to add four cloves to it. We're also going to put unsliced tomatoes into it. And then we're going to season the, the entire meal, tablespoon of Italian seasoning. Come and watch how I do it. Welcome to Healthy Vegan Living. Okay, so the first step is to cut the onion. So what we're doing is we're slicing the onion. And then right after that, we're going to cut up this, for example, I'm going to cut a small piece here of the garlic and it's going to be just placed right on top of the squash. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to just show you. I'm going to cut the ends of this crooked neck squash. Definitely want to make sure that gourd is not cooking in your instant pot. I'm not going to peel this because there's no pesticides on it. I'm just going to slowly make these large quarter of an inch cuts. Now we're going to do the same thing for the zucchini. Cut off the gourd side, cut off the end. We're not going to peel it, we're just going to cut it in about a quarter inch slices. Now when they get much, much bigger than this, what we may do in the future is we'll cut it in half and stuff it. But for this meal, we're going to eat it like it is. Okay, now 
before we put in this huge zucchini, because we're over three quarters of the pot, we're going to add our other things. So, for example, we're going to open up this can and put that in next. So this can's already, the top has already been washed, just to make sure. Okay, so now what we've done is we've loaded all the vegetables in here, a can of tomato juice, a, a cup and a half of water, and some herbs, some, some Italian seasoning. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the pot on, the lid on. We're gonna make sure that it's adjusted to the center and we're gonna set the timer. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust the time. We're gonna press manual and we need two minutes. Now it's going to take five minutes for the pot to come up to the two minute mark. So that's five. It's going to take... Then it will cook the pot for two more minutes from that. So that's seven minutes. And it'll probably take me a minute to get rid of the steam, what I call fast venting. So that means it's ready. So now what we do is we turn off the power. And now we're going to fast vent it. Now, watch. But the vegetables are ready. We can't let it wait for another 10 more minutes, otherwise they're gonna be mush. What you do is you take a towel and you're gonna press down with the towel. You can see some, ooh, it's a little hot. You press down with the towel and you're gonna get rid of the steam. Or the other choice you can do is leave the towel on a little bit on top there and just touch the top. So, the, so it's just gonna take a little bit of time. The other choice you could do, you take a long spoon like this, some kind of protection. Now what I've done is I've gone to a large bowl and I'll be moving it next to the Instapot pressure cooker so that I can remove the contents of that in the bowl so that it can cool while I walk the dogs dogs are anxious to get out. Now that's the noise of the lock dropping. And then you can hear the music so you know it's safe. Go in, the juices come in, put this in a safe place. I use my counter because all all ports. I'm gonna move this closer and I use the spoon that I vented it with and we're gonna pick it all up. But before I do that I'm gonna mix it up. Now there's a lot of juice in here and you want to save that juice. And the reason why is because it is now part of this stew. Okay, so we're just going to, for right now, I'm just gonna pick up 
spoonfuls of it and let it cool and then I'll be able to bag it. I've saved some for dinner tonight and bag it. Now you see the seeds there? That's what I'm talking about. Sometimes the seeds come out. Now even though we scraped quite a bit of them out, they came out of some of the other ones that we I had not straightened up. These are edible seeds, they're not gonna hurt you, and they're never hard. But a lot of people don't like them. That's something that if you're gonna use a cooked neck squash, you need to get those seeds out. That's if you're a type of person that that makes a big difference too. Now here's the cooked neck squash with no seeds, as you can see on the spoon, and it's perfectly fine. Now how do you know if it's cooked? Already a very soft vegetable, but you can see how it just falls right through all the multiple layers of squash. So that's how you know. Get all this out, spread it out a little bit. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is get a hoving mitt and try to keep the juices and we'll pour the juices right in here. And then when I come back from my walk, I'll have some delicious stew to eat. Doing this carefully so you can see, what I really need to do is capture some of the herbs that we poured in. And this is going to take about half an hour to 45 minutes to cool. I'll probably end up breaking it into another container so it could cool faster. And we take the pot, put it back in the Insta pot itself, put the lid back on, that way nobody gets burnt. Unplug the power. Well, it's still too hot to be able to bag it, so I'm eating it. And it's got a really nice flavor. So this would make a very hearty, delicious stew. What I do regret is that these seeds showed up. Now, I ate a couple already, and they're not that bad. They're quite soft. I don't like the look of the seeds in it. I think I'm going to put it in this container. Now, it's not all of it's going to fit, but a lot of it is. There's my bowl over here. So, as you can see, it fit these large Rubbermaid container, and I still had some room left over, say I wasn't going to be eating dinner. I'm going to cover this up, stick it in my fridge, but for tonight, I think the meal turned out pretty darn good. So this is what's left of that delicious meal I made. I enjoyed the meal so much, I decided not to freeze it, and what I'm doing is I'm eating it for my lunch. I get a nice large bowl like this, I use a slotted spoon, and I put a generous amount in my bowl. Then I take as much of the liquid out of the bowl that's existing. And this right here, I'm gonna make another meal out of it and I'm gonna show you how you can use your leftovers to make entirely new different meal. So this ends this video. Thank you for watching me and I look forward to seeing you in another video. Have a good day. If you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.